All right, so the first concept here is Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Hopefully by now you know that. C is the one that matters. C is important throughout the whole, all of this. C has to be across from the 90, so it is opposite of the 90 degree angle. It is the hypotenuse. It is the longest side of the right triangle. The Pythagorean theorem only applies to right triangles. And so we're going to use it. I'm going to separate this right here. We're going to use it for an example real quick to, to do indirect measurement. Like most of you have been on a little bit on indirect measurement as well. And so we have an example here where a tree fell over. A tree, you know, in a storm, tree broke down. And we want to figure out, we knew that tree was pretty massive, but how big was that tree? And so we take a tape measure and we figure out that, that from here to here, it's six and a half feet. It was six feet, six inches. It worked out nice for us. And so 6.5 feet. And then from here all the way out to where the tree hit was 20, uh, well, all the way at the top of the tree since we're trying to find, right, was 25 uh, feet. And so we're trying to figure out how big the tree was when it was standing. And so we want X. Now, to do this, we realize that A is, was, thank you, it was standing straight up. It's a right triangle right here. And so we're going to do 6.5 squared plus 25 squared equals x squared. x had to be c because it was across from the 90. And so now we grab a calculator. 6.5 squared is 42.25. 25 squared is 625. We add those up. And we get 667.25. Now to solve for x, I need to get rid of the square. So we square root, right? X equals, and we hit here, second so square root, 25.83. We'll just say 0.8. Right? Now, 25.8 was this section right here. The whole tree, when it was standing, if I put it back together, also has that trunk now of 6.5 or the stump now of 6.5. And so the whole tree was 25.8 plus 6.5 or 32.3 feet. And so that is an example of using Pythagorean theorem and then answering a greater question. Another thing we can use Pythagorean theorem for is to figure out if a triangle is a right triangle. So say we know the three sides of a triangle are 5, 12, 13. I would do a squared, which is 25. 5 squared is 25 plus b squared is 144, equals c squared is 169. If it's a right triangle, that will be true. That will be true. If I pick some other numbers, like 5, 12, um, 11. We already know this 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 169. 11 squared is 121, so this is not true. And so now C is still the key. C squared is smaller. And so since C squared is smaller, it's acute. If I go 5, 12, 15, I already know 5 squared is 25, plus 144, those have 169. 15 squared is 225. So that's not true. And C squared, C squared is the key. C squared is larger or bigger. And so it's obtuse. And so those are two different ways we can use the Pythagorean theorem. The next thing we had in our unit was 9-4, was special right triangles. And so there's two kinds of triangles. Make sure you have these charts, 45-45-90 and 30-60-90. Now the charts we use, this was S, 
S, S root two. And down here it's S, S root three, two S. And so you want these charts to use um, during the test. And so how do I know this is a 45, 45, 90? Once I saw at least those two are the same. And so because these two sides are the same, these two angles are the same, I saw the triangle theorem. And because that's 90 and the triangle is 180, that's 90 leaves 90, split it in half, makes it 45, 45. Now, these charts, these angles always work in concert with the side opposite. And so I'm going to put a six here and a six here. S is six in this problem. And so this is six square root two. And that is X. So just because I'm going this way, it's multiply. And so six is S. So this is six times square root two. I can leave it like that. If they ask for a decimal, you just type that into a calculator. Six times square root two. And put down your answer with the decimal. So just make sure you read the questions asking. Down here, where does the 14 go? The 14 is opposite of the 90. It's the hypotenuse. And so the 14 goes here. And so if I ever don't start, I have to go backwards. I'm not starting at the beginning, so I have to go backwards. All right? So I do the opposite. Instead of multiplying, I divide. 14 divided by 2 is 7. And then going forward again, this S is 7. So S times square root three is just seven times root three. And so these are my answers. Now for this case, across from the 30 is Z. So this is Z and this is Y. And so those are how you use those tables, all right? For 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 triangles. The rest of our test is on Sokotoa. All right, we're gonna apply trigonometry we're going to use trigonometry to find sides. We're going to use trigonometry to find angles. And so everything left is on Sokoto. And so some things we have to know before we can even do Sokoto. When I look at a triangle, it has to be right triangle, just like this unit. It has to be right triangle. And so the hypotenuse, hopefully at this point, something you know, the hypotenuse is always opposite of the 90 degree angle. And so now, which one's the O and which one's the A? That's the H. Hypotenuse is the H. Which one's the O? Which one's the A? This is the angle. That theta sign is the angle I'm working from. And so I like to think of all the way opposite of that angle as the opposite. Some people really just, I mean, they always go to an angle and they think opposite. And so adjacent means I'm right next to you. And so that angle is right next to these two sides. Well, the one side is the hypotenuse. So it's already a letter. So the other side it's right next to has to be the A. Right? And so it doesn't really matter how you think of it as long as you can label the sides H, O, and A. Now the S, C, and T come from the calculator. And so the S, C, and T are those buttons on a calculator for sine, cosine, and tangent. And they're always of the angle. And so now let's look at examples. We got a 20 degree angle right there. Let's find this. Uh, so first we got to label the sides. This side out here is the hypotenuse. It is opposite of the 90. This side is all the way opposite of the 20. This side is my A. I don't have a number or a letter there, so I'm not using the A. I'm not even going to put it down. I know it's the A. I know I'm using to solve this, the O and the H. So I go up here. Which one has both letters, an O and an H. So, uh, or Toa. Well, so has both letters. So, sine 20 equals opposite over hypotenuse. 
I write it as a proportion, cross multiply, x equals, and now I have to take a calculator. One times x is just x. Sine 20 times 12. Don't know what that is. Take my Now I need to make sure my calculator is in degree mode. The quickest way to check that is to do cosine 60. If I do cosine 60 and it tells me the answer is 0 0.5, I know my calculator is in the correct mode. So now I want to do sine 20. On my calculator, I have to then close the parentheses at times 12. 4.1 is my answer. This actually says 4.104, but that doesn't round anywhere. So 4.1. Let's do another one. Again, let's make that angle 20. Let's make that 12. Let's put the X here. That 12 is still opposite of the 90, still the longest size, the hypotenuse. We just talked about this being opposite. This is right next to it, so it's the adjacent. This is still the opposite out here. But there's nothing there. There's no letter, there's no number. I'm not using it. I'm using the A and the H, which go with cu. So cosine 20 equals A over H. A is X, X over 12. Cross multiply. Cross multiply X. 1 times x is x. Cosine 20 times 12. Take your calculator again. All right. Cosine 20 times 12. 11.276. And so 11.28, we'll say. This one around here is tenth because it was a zero after that. All right. This one around the nearest hundred. Make sure you know what you're supposed to round to for the problem. One more um, we can look at, if I can make it work here on the screen. Yeah, All right. I put a nine there and X there and that's still angle 20. Now this is still the hypotenuse, but there's no uh, letter or number there. So I'm not using the H. This is the adjacent. It's right next to the angle. All the way opposite of that angle is the opposite. So I'm using O and A. So I'm using TOA. All right. So I put tangent. Tangent 20 equals opposite over adjacent. Now this is the first case where I gave you one where the X is on bottom. So when I cross multiply, I get 1 times 9 is 9, x times tangent 20 is x times tangent 20 equals 9, right? I can't solve for x that way, so I have to divide tangent 20. So I know I'm getting x equals 9 divided by tangent 20. And then I take that into my calculator. All right, now I need to be careful to do it correctly. 9 divided by tangent 20, 24.727, 24.727. I want to round up to 24.73. And so those are examples of sine, cosine, and tangent. And then the last kind of from a teaching concept, the last other example of Sokotoa here is finding it when it's an angle. And so I can still be sine, cosine, or tangent. I still got label sides, but everything the same, All right? Then add this little note. To find a missing angle, I have to use the inverse. I said find a missing angle equals use the inverse. And so I still have to label the sides. This is the hypotenuse. It's opposite of the 90. X is the angle I'm trying to find. So this is right next to the X, it's my A. All the way opposite of the X would be up here. There is no number there, I need numbers to solve a math problem, not using the O. So I'm using A and H. So I'm using cup, A, H, all right? 
So cosine of x, I do not know what the angle is, equals a over h. Now, to get solve for an angle or to get rid of the cosine, I have to use the inverse. And so I take my calculator. For most calculators, you're going to have to hit a second button. And so for this calculator, I hit second. And then right above cosine is the little cosine with a negative one, which means inverse cosine. And I type it in, and it tells me that it's 60 degrees. It worked out nice and even. And that is how I find a missing angle.